discovered by Arthur Ashkin in the 1970s, and he noticed that if you took micron-sized glass beads, so that's one millionth of a metre, put them into water, and then shone a strong light source through them, he could get them to levitate, which, I mean, I was impressed when I looked at um, and, and he's developed that idea so that if you focus it um, through a lens, you can actually manipulate it in three dimensions. So how do we even manage to do this? What's the light doing? Light has momentum. What is momentum? It's a relationship between mass and speed. So classically, we don't think mass, but we do think of it as having speed. In fact, we travel very quickly. So we manipulate this all the time. The lenses and glasses, we, we shape where the light's traveling. Um, and so as it changes its speed as it passes through it, obviously it's the momentum is direct, directly related, so its momentum changes, but that doesn't just disappear, it has to go somewhere. So in those tiny glass beads, that momentum change was enough to move them. And so that's what we use, this change of momentum as the speed of light changes as it passes through the object, to pick them up and move them around. So nowadays we use lasers cells are also one millionth of a metre in size, anywhere up to five to hundreds if they're from the heart. And so we've got uh, a set of tweezers that we can pick them up and move them around with, and that's amazing. But if you've ever Googled lasers and looked on YouTube and not looked at videos of harassing cats, um, <laughs> you'll know that you probably shouldn't shine on people's eyes. And the, and the same thing really applies in the lab context as well. You shouldn't shine them directly at cells because you damage them. There's too much energy pouring into the cell. So really, we want to use tools. We want to pick them up and kind of squeezing them and moving them around. So there's lots of diseases we'd really love to know and understand better. So if you've ever been to the doctor and felt the lumps and bumps, that's because things like cancer feel different. So ideally we'd like to pick up cells and squeeze them. So do you remember those glass beads I mentioned at the start? Ideally we'd like to use something like that, but really we want to have a bit of distance between us and the laser, so we want something that's chopstick shaped. So if you've gone to the trouble of getting a laser and getting your cells and then using chopsticks that are a million of a meter long, what the hell do you do there? So we've actually gone and used a natural so algae are one of the most abundant biomass on the planet. They live in rivers and lakes. They're the, the, the grass of the sea, if you will. Single cell organisms. And there's a group of them called diatoms that have these incredibly ornate glass shells. They're one of the first things that was studied by a microscope. They're beautiful. So we've actually taken algae out of the lake after a certain estuary. We pick them up with our laser. 